from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Destructive and deadly wildfires continue to rage in wine country. 40 people have been killed as flames scorch over 170,000 acres in the North Bay. It's destroyed at least 5,700 homes and businesses and forced 100,000 people out of their homes. It's Sunday, October 15th. I'm Melissa Kane. And I'm Phil Matier. Now, the biggest problem that the area of the fire crews are facing this morning is the Nuns Fire, which expanded on two fronts late Friday night. Oakmont on the north end, Laval Valley near Sonoma on the south. Now, that's where homes were burned yesterday morning as shifting winds pushed the flames into at least three residences on Castle Road. KPIX 5 reporter Ann Makovic is live in Oakmont. Okay, what's the latest, Ann? Well, the good news is that now as the sun is coming up, they're going to be able to start their water drops again on this brand new fire that really picked up over the weekend. Unfortunately, it's too late to save this neighborhood here behind me. They were evacuated early yesterday morning. You can see some of the devastation here. What used to be a home behind it, uh, some vineyards over here, a burnt out truck. And behind that, you can see a tree that is still on fire this morning. This is the Oakmont fire burning on Castle Road. We're east of Sonoma right now. It was sparked overnight Friday, and it is now only 10% contained after burning 550 acres. Those numbers may change now that Cal Fire is able to get a better grasp on what we're dealing with. But the Tubbs fire is burning to the north, the Nuns fire to the south, and there has been a lot of concern that this could be the beginning of a merger between those two huge fires. Much of the the work done overnight to try to control this fire has been done by hand crews and bulldozers trying to draw a line to stop the spread as this fire worked its way down the hillsides. And the fires in this area have already ravaged much of Annadale State Park, possibly up to three quarters of it, and are threatening Hood Mountain Regional Park. Terrain is a huge challenge here. It's steep and full of fire fuel. And then the changing weather. There are variable winds, gusty winds on the ridge tops, and a heavy fuel load, steep terrain, all that stuff adds up to active fire behavior. The big concern right now is a radio repeater tower that is in Sugarloaf Ridge State Park. Cal Fire depends on that tower for communication, so they have been desperately trying to protect that tower. As for the weather conditions now, you can see no wind, high humidity, so that is good news, but it's not going to last very long. So right now is Cal Fire's chance to really try to uh, get a hold on those lines and make sure that this thing doesn't grow any further. Again, the merger could be a concern. Back to you. Thanks. And did people heed the evacuation orders in that area? Yeah, and we're talking thousands of people. The good news, according to the Sonoma County Sheriff's Department, is they did. They really were prepared to get out. And this is one of those early morning evacuations that happened overnight uh, in between Friday and Saturday. So it's one of those situations where you had deputies going door to door, but people were prepared. You know, now that we're a week into this, people realize that it's no joke when you get a, an evacuation advisory and how very quickly things can change. So firefighters, emergency officials really crediting all the residents getting out for their ability to be able to protect as much of this area as they thus far have been able to. Bill. All right. All right. Thank you. Ann Makovic in Oakmont. Thanks, Ann. And here we have the latest numbers on containment. Now, the Nuns Fire has burned over 47,000 acres, and it's now 25% contained. The Pocket Fire near Geyserville has scorched over 11,000 acres. Containment is at 15% right now. And crews are making good progress on that 35,000-acre Tubbs Fire. It is now 60% contained. And the more than 51,000-acre Atlas Fire in Napa County is at 56%. Our air quality in the Bay Area is still unhealthy, especially in the fire impacted counties, and that smoke plume continues to head south. And joining us for the latest is uh, Bay Area Quality Management District uh, Tom Flanagan, joining us live on the phone to talk about what we're facing here in the Bay. Tom, can you sort of give us a summation of where we stand as far as the air quality? Well, I'm happy to report, Phil, that. We've seen a dramatic improvement in air quality, especially considering where we were and have been over the past week. We had unhealthy levels of air quality moving across the entire Bay Area, but we've seen a drastic improvement yesterday 
and into today. In fact, the latest air quality uh, data shows that most of the Bay Area is now in the good range for air quality. Like I said, this is a dramatic improvement from where we've been, and we're benefiting from a northeast wind that now is sweeping the smoke out over the ocean as, as opposed to moving across the populated areas of the Bay Area. Now, Tom, people have been told to stay inside and not engage in outdoor activities for this past week. Is it safe now to go for a run or a hike if you're uh, in one of the counties that hasn't been uh, a location of the fires? Well, definitely we've been reminding people to check the ever-changing conditions. I mean, uh, we still have active fires and uh, still seeing pollution move into the levels, uh, upper levels of the atmosphere. And at any moment, really, we could see uh, patchy smoke, and that could impact people. So we want people to uh, look at our website and check the latest air quality levels and then make their own personal judgment on if it's appropriate for them to go outdoors. Also, we encourage people to just continue to check in with themselves. They are their own best health advocate, and they can feel what they can handle. Um, so we encourage people um, to just continue to check in. Like I said, I'm happy to report we have improved air quality across most of the region. I think people stepping out this morning will feel it and be able to see it in the air that those places, though, close to the fire are still obviously experiencing poor air quality, and they'll want to continue to um, stay indoors in those areas. But for the majority of the Bay Area this morning, we're waking up to good air quality. Real quick, we have to go in a minute. Masks. We hear different reports about masks. Uh, are, what kind should you get? Are they good? Give us a little something on that. Certainly. So uh, an N95 mask has been recommended for anyone who's close to the fire and has to be outdoors in the smoke. Of course, the first and most important thing you can do is stay indoors. And you won't need a mask if you're able to keep your indoor space clean. Um, these masks really only work if they're tightly fitted to your face and you're pushing the air through the filter itself to breathe in and out of. But um, we are encouraging people just to stay indoors if you're close to the fire. Um, like I said, the drastic improvement in air quality that we've seen this morning, I don't think we'll need to see people wearing masks um, unless you are close and in the plume of the smoke itself. All right, thank you. The fires have destroyed at least 5,700 homes and businesses across the wine country, and now there are reports trickling in of phone scammers preying on victims. The callers say that they can provide financial aid or help people negotiate with insurance companies, and they may ask for personal information like social security numbers. One of the things that sometimes happens in the wake of these disasters is scam artists will flood in to try to take advantage of grieving victims. So we have a law that prohibits, for example, public adjusters from coming in until seven days after the evacuation order is lifted. The state insurance commissioner says that people can call his department for help with dealing with insurance companies. And some good news to pass along. We're told that Kaiser Medical Center in Santa Rosa could reopen any time now. It's been closed since last Monday when the nearby Tubbs fire forced the evacuation of everyone inside. Now, Sutter Santa Rosa remains closed. Meanwhile, a drone photographer got this eerie shot of a postal truck delivering mail in the burned out coffee park neighborhood in Santa Rosa. Now, the Postal Service is holding mail for people in the evacuation zones. So customers in the 95404, 95405 and 95409 zip codes can pick up their mail at the main office on 2nd Street. The Roseland office in Sebastopol Road is handling zip code 95403. And customers from Sonoma, Kenwood, Glen Ellen, Eldridge, Vineburg, El Verano, and Boys Hot Springs can pick up their mail at Casa Grande Post Office in Petaluma. This morning, a historic winery is still standing thanks to hardworking firefighters. Now you can see how close the fire came to the building known as the Castle at the uh, Ledson Winery in Kenwood, east of Santa Rosa. To the southeast, California's oldest winery, Buena Vista, was also threatened by flames. The Nuns Fire got close, but thanks to teamwork from local and out-of-state fire crews, the winery was left unscathed. There are people who I have never met and whose names I may or may not ever know for whom I am 
immensely grateful. Wineries are as lucky as Buena Vista. At least 16 wineries have been damaged or destroyed by flames. Another major development, PG&E is warning investors about the liability it may face in the wake of the fires. As CAL FIRE investigators are looking into whether downed power lines may have sparked one or more of these fires. Literally in Sonoma County alone, we have 20 cause and origin investigators combing the landscape working on that. It's very technical. You know, clues, information, all these things can be consumed in a fire. Now, as of now, there's no official finding of cause. Still, PG&E stock was down 10 percent on Friday. Now, the company has already made a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission saying it is, quote, unknown whether the utility is responsible for the fires. The document says the company ha has $800 million in liability insurance, and if that amount is insufficient to cover costs, PG&E's financial condition could be, quote, materially affected. And so could its public relations, especially in the wake of the deadly San Bruno fires, its relationships with the public it serves. You were up in the fire zone. What were you hearing from residents? Well, we always ask, who do you think started this? What do you think started this? And to a person, they say PG&E. They think either PG&E started it with faulty lines or exacerbated it unnecessarily with some sort of shoddy maintenance of, uh, of their power line facility. So no, that's there's definitely a PR problem. Out. That is a PR problem, but also as our fire battalion chief, Cal Fire Battalion Chief noted it's also the air, it's the wind, it's the dry, it's a whole lot of things. Even where we build contributes to these things, but it's going to be PG&E that probably pairs, gets the, uh, the the legal brunt of this. Um, absolutely, because the wind and uh, and the, the the dry grass doesn't have deep pockets or 800 million dollars in liability insurance to help rebuild this community.